God bless you. How are you guys doing today? Today is April the 13th, 2020, and I just want to wish you a wonderful day. I have had a very blessed weekend, and the Holy Spirit was showing me a timeline, so I just want to get right into that and share that with you, and interesting things that came about through listening to that. I hope uh, I can't, I don't have my monitor happening, you know, with my audio part of it. So I do have some music in the background. I hope it's not too loud. I'm going to uh, watch for your comments just for a few moments to see if that's okay. Good morning, Dave. Hey, Joey. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord, she says amid the chaos. Amen. Amen. Joey, you have swords going like that. You are so right on with what God is going to talk about today. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, so is the audio, is the music, can you hear the audio in the background at all? Maybe can't even hear it. Maybe it's too loud. I don't know because, like I say, I have it down. So uh, that's just what happened when we were messing with the settings. And... Livia, God bless you, Livia. And I want to say God bless you to Mary and Sandy, Jennifer, Joey, Christine, everybody. You don't hear it. Okay, Sandy, thanks. Um, I think I'm just going to take it down. I'm going to take it, take it off because it might. It's just a little audio thing that I was working on, but <coughs> it's okay. No big deal. There. Okay, that might help the stream anyhow a little bit. Oh my goodness, I have been up till 3 in the morning, so please, we are not warriors. Are we not warriors? Joey says, you are so right on. Joey, you are so right on. Okay, what's going on, Susan? What's going on is, first off, I want to wish everyone a very blessed Resurrection Day. I pray you had a good day. My thoughts were with you, and I was hoping that somehow you would know that I am blessing you guys in the Spirit with uh, wishing you a blessed day, because uh, we are all at home, a lot of us. Some of us can't go out at all. And so it's a very difficult time, a warrior time. And the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, I've been hearing a lot of things through the whole weekend. So I always just wait and say, okay, this morning, what do you want to talk about, Lord? Because that's all I care about. <laughs> that's all I care about. I know that's all you care about. So the Lord was showing me a battlefield. He was showing me a timeline. He was showing me the words remnant for remnant from the ashes, remnant from ashes. And if you don't think you're in a battle, you are. If you are in the body of Christ, we are all, we have always been in a battle, but we are in a different kind of battle now than ever before because we are battling demons. We never thought we would battle different kinds of oppression that are trying to come at us. Some people are saying that heavier demons are coming through the atmosphere. All I know is the birds don't know anything except they're singing to God out there. That's all I know. You cannot tell the birds there's a virus happening. They're still out there singing. The birds are singing, you know. They're not quarantining the birds. Do you notice that? <laughs> I just, you know, the in fact... The animals are coming out more than ever now. The animals. Oh, is that prophetic? Hey, Jazzer Lights, good to see you. Good to see you and wonderful to have you with us. Yes, right now. Jennifer says, yeah. Jennifer says they're, they're singing right now. You know, um, it's interesting how we see nature arising. Do you see that? Do you see nature arising? It's like the birds are singing I believe more than they've ever sang before. And yes, there are <coughs> excuse me, storms on the East Coast. In fact, there are terrible tornadoes happening. Uh, I know within the last couple of days there was a few. 
and unbelievable times are happening. But the animals are rejoicing. They're having a picnic out there. They're having so much fun running amok, just running wherever. It's like even the animals are awakening. And they're just like, wow, wow, they're so happy. And this is the way we should be. We should be happy. You know, a lot of Christians right now, they're saying, oh, I'm just, I've got cabin fever. I've got to get out. I've got to get out. Listen, the only place the enemy tries to really take you down is in your mind. That is where, you know, he has total peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. And uh, as a man thinketh, so is he. And on and on and on. We could read Proverbs and all those. But I just want to say, this the dark the darker it gets i know this might sound crazy but the darker it gets the lighter we get the darker the enemies come out against us the lighter god's light is in us through us god's angels are ever so present around us that's why god just showed me this timeline that we are on this timeline and as it's getting darker 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 guess what's happening with us we're getting lighter 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 that's what's happening and remnant from the ashes oh my goodness i have to share with you hey jason god bless you have to share with you what's happening with the words remnant from ashes you know i didn't even know that this is a game did you know that? I, uh, what do I know? I just go by whatever phrase God gives me. I get on the internet and I look it up. And it was just like, wow, are you? is that interesting? Remnant from the ashes. Uh, interesting. It says remnant from the ashes. Leftover remnant, which is a noun, which is a you know person, place, or thing. Remnant. Isn't that interesting? A small part or portion that remains after the main part no longer exists. Synonyms is a remainder, <coughs> leftover, oddment, and, and, remainder, remnant, oddment. Noun. Just think about that. Okay, that's a secular game. So I want to go and I want to just share a couple of things about what he was showing me this morning. Uh, remnant from the ashes is actually, if you go to uh, from the wiki, uh, from the wiki, what is this? Remnant from the ashes dot W-I-K-I dot fextrophile uh, classes. I'm going to share this so you guys can see exactly where I'm taking this. You can look this up later or if you multitask, whatever you do. Okay, this is actually, in fact, I'm going to go backwards here and I'm going to read. Okay, Remnant from the Ashes, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. This is uh, an action role playing third person shooter video game developed by Gunfire Games and published by Perfect World Entertainment. Perfect World. I see so prophetically every time I look at anything, I can just look right at that and I could say it's an action role playing third person. Who's a third person? <laughs> Shooter video. Who's shooting the demons? <laughs> the battle is not yours, but it is mine. Hello. It's just so funny. Every time I look at anything, it's just like, thank you, Jesus. I see this. I see this remnant. Hey, we are the remnant right there. That's a stopper from the ashes yes we are coming out of ashes we are coming out of this battle and the lord is the third person <laughs> he's his what or what are his bullets the word of god the word of god shooter video game develop a and we are in a battle we're in a battle i mean just look at all the news they're saying the national guards out there i mean it's just too funny Gun and who is it developed by? Gunfire Games <laughs> and published by Perfect World. 
Oh my gosh, perfect world. What is our perfect world? Heaven. Entertainment for Microsoft Windows. Oh well, you know the devil. They can have their, uh, they can have their perfect world. But we know what our perfect world is, and we know where we're going, and we know who's going to own the world in the end. Well, he owns it now anyway. But you know what I'm saying. We're coming back. We're coming back. It was released on August the twentieth, two thousand nineteen. Initial release date, August 16, 2019. Just a year ago, this was invented. Um, the engine is Unreal Engine, whatever that is. I mean, I just think Unreal Engine, that is so funny. Yeah, they aren't going to know. You know, the devil, they are not going to know who's powering our engine. <laughs> But they will be bending their knee to it, I can tell you that. Platforms, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, uh, genres is action, adventure game, third-person shooter. I just love it. I had no idea this game even, uh, you know, it's only rated 3.9. Um, it just goes on and on. Okay, just wanted to read a little, little bit here. The coolest looking armor sets that you can get for this is uh, Void. This is by, Void is number one. This is by far the most sinister looking armor in the entire game and is coincidentally the best armor you can wear is to be Void. Void means to me, you know, the enemy tries to appear that we don't see him. He tries to appear that we don't see him. He tries to be invisible. That is his, oh, that is his, what he seeks for is that we don't even know we're fighting an enemy. But you know what? Void. What does void mean? When you void a receipt, you know, when you're working as a cashier and you say, I have a void, I have a void. What does that mean? That's sort of like file 86 to me. When you're a, when you're a waitress or you're in, in a working office and you say, this is for file 86, what, what file is that? We're just getting rid of it. <laughs> so it's the most sinister army in the entire game. <coughs> I'm sorry. I think it's just so funny. Okay, what else did I want to... Uh, okay, so that's that. That's enough with that. I just thought that was <coughs> really interesting. Uh, the timeline for God is very interesting. couple of things that I saw... Uh, that I want to talk about a couple other videos I would love to is the divine language, the language of the gods or in mono monotheism, the language of God or angels is the concept or a mystical or divine proto, P-R-O-T-O -O, language which predates and supersedes human speech. I would love to touch on that subject. <laughs> I would love to. But uh, who wrote Genesis? Tradition credits Moses as the author of Genesis. Of course, we know that's when um, we see uh, that uh, the timeline, you know, uh, basically in the Bible. Uh, let me back up here just a little bit and see if there was anything else. Uh, the Bible for Dummies. Very early, Adam and Eve, Genesis 2, 3, still quite early, Noah's flood, Genesis 6 through 9, around 2000 BCE, Abraham and Sarah leave for their promised land in Canaan, Genesis, that's where we're going to be going, <laughs> our promised land, Genesis 12, 25, around 1250 or 1450 BCE, Moses leads the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery, Exodus 1, 15. How many years does the Bible go back? 4,000 years. While difficulties with biblical texts makes it impossible to reach sure conclusions, perhaps the most widely held hypothesis is that it embodies an overall scheme of 4,000 years, a great year taking the rededication of the temple by the uh, Maccabees in 164 BCE as its end point. Well, we know what the end point is. 
So that was just one thing there is that I wanted to share with you that the Lord showed me about the remnant, the remnant. I want to get into a couple of, <coughs> excuse me, scriptures that I felt I just typed in the word remnant because we are at, we are so close. You know, it's actually, it's just getting good right now. I don't know if you guys have been feeling from the Lord about the remnant in, in your spirit. And it's interesting how it says that the remnant is, what was that? When something is left over, a small part or portion that remains after the main part no longer exists. This to me really caught my attention because I think about the ministers, the gospel, the Christian, the gospel, uh, the ministers that have gone astray, the Christians that are losing hope in the Lord. This is so sad. Many are falling away. It says will in the last days. And that is where this remnant, which is left over a small part or portion that remains after the main part no longer exists. That's heavy duty when you think of that. To me, that's heavy duty when I think of that spiritually, because that tells me that many are falling out, falling away, falling out, losing hope. Uh, remember, it says, keep your hands to the plow. Uh, don't faint if you faint not. Remember, uh, you're actually not even worthy to hold the plow, it says, if you take your hands away from the plow. And so this is needed to be, I believe, to continue to remind us that God, our God, does reign and we are heading into when it's really going to get heavy duty now. It's really going to get heavy duty. There are some really dark things that are uh, spoken about some people that I have a lot of respect. They see a very dark, glim future right now that we're actually going to uh, have to be uh, given a choice. Whose God will we serve, right? And I don't know that it's actually coming to that right now. I know that the heat is on. I know it's getting darker. But we see a dividing of ministers and ministries and just people speaking out on the, uh, on the websites and, and the YouTube, you know, different uh, messages people are putting out. Some people are feeling that we're heading right into a huge revival. Everything is going to surface over and it's just going to, you know, this, uh, all of this uh, time where they're telling us to stay home is going to come to an end. And everything's going to be wonderful after that. We're going to have a huge revival. <clears throat> I see this. And, and others are saying, you know, it's never going to change. It's never. And of course, it's never going to be what it was yesterday. We know that. But what is actually, how close are we on that timeline is where my eyes are focused. The timeline of our Lord. And uh, so... I don't feel that uh, conversation uh, for to divide the body of Christ is is what's important, is what's important. And anything that begot, begets a, a quarrel, you know, a quarreling about, oh, no, I'm right. Oh, no, I'm right. And so it's a very sad time when I see people trying to call somebody out, you know. I, I think it's most important to just speak the truth and let the Lord himself speak to the spirit of each individual and let it's sort of like Jiminy Cricket, you know, let, let him be your guide, let your conscience be your guide. Well, we need to let God be our guide personally. And so I try to, uh, that's why you never see me very ever rarely will I say a name of anybody. I will always say what I see in general because you see there's always more than one person with the same opinion anyway. So, uh, and, and you can't think you're going to get along with everybody. That's not going to happen because we surely see a division happening right now. Some people are, are very concerned 
about their uh, legal status if they are ministries. You know, this is getting tighter and tighter right now because they have everything wrapped up in their 501. And so, you know, for someone that is not in a 501, that is just a journalist, I'll say, to uh, say to all the ministries, well, you just need to drop that. They don't, I don't know if they know how in how what an octopus that is you can't just go unplug it and that's it it's much deeper it goes deeper it goes also uh in in many areas and so legally and so anyway what i wanted to say that's why we have to just trust god it's like if you told a journalist to you know that they need to stop reporting that would be crazy because that's what god where god has them and uh, surely a lot of people that ha started 501Cs was God led them to do that years ago when things were totally different. So I don't think it's right to uh, tell people what to do. You know, let God tell the people what to do for them that's right for them is what I always try to encourage people to say. Exodus 26, 12. Okay some wonderful scriptures. I'm going to, I want to copy this because this is so wonderful. And I want to share with you guys what I'm seeing here. There we go. Okay. That is the Bible gateway. Hey, Jennifer Aria, how are you? Son of the King. I was led to look up Romans 1, 5. What is it? 11, 5, yesterday, this seems very timely. It, it, it's, always, <clears throat> it's always timely with God's people when you're really in the Spirit of God. It's always timely. And you don't have to be a minister to be having the same message. You know, it's like we're all in different specialties anyway that God has brought us together. You know, we're still the body of Christ, whether whatever your job in life is. Exodus 26 12 i just typed in the word remnant showing the results one of 25 so i'm not going to read all 25 that's cuckoo too much because i want to pray with you <clears throat> and i just want to have time to talk too to you exodus 26 12 and the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent the half curtain that remaineth shall hang over the backside of the tabernacle. Do you see what I see in that? I always see prophetically. You know, I realize <coughs> that this was in Exodus. But, you know, the word of God is alive. I believe we can take scripture and take one verse and God will speak to us about our own situation today of what's happening with us personally. If you don't get something from reading the word of God, then keep in prayer and ask God to open it up to you. Don't give up. Knock and keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking. And to everyone that knocks, the door will be opened. Amen. And the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent. The remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent, the body of Christ. We are the remnant that will remaineth. And we will still be found hanging and intact and, and all of that. The half curtain that remaineth shall hang over the backside of the tabernacle. Do you know what I see prophetically? I, I Prophetically, what I just see. I'll just say it that way. Shall hang over the backside of the tabernacle. Oh, hang over the backside. That means we're going to be with the presence of God at the table, the wedding of the Lamb. The backside of the tabernacle. What is the tabernacle? The tabernacle is the holy of holies where God meets his people. I think this is also symbolic. It's just gorgeous. It's just such an encouragement. It's a personal encouragement to me. And the remnant, Leviticus 2, 3, and the remnant of the meat. Isn't it interesting? We're reading this right after 
what I call Resurrection Day, Easter. I mean, I was a little kid. We all knew that we celebrated when Jesus died. You know, Easter and Christmas, and the devil wants to rip that up and, and just try to get the Christians to fight about that. This it's, it's, it's insane. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It's a thing most holy. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. I just can, I can almost cry when I read the word of God, because to me, it's all so uh, symbolic, so prophetic, such an encouragement to show us, hey, you are my remnant. You are my remnant. You are most holy because you bring your first fruits to me the lord would say your first fruits you know people i'm just using this as an example and i'm not telling you to do anything i'm not anything i'm just god shows me and so i speak people send their tithe to this ministry and i can't speak for other ministries i can only speak for this ministry and many times on their card like in North Carolina, in San Diego. God knows what you do these things in secret. I see them, God sees them, and it's between you and God. And many people say, this is my first fruits, or you just know it's their first fruits. They don't even have to say it because it's the timing. It's the timing and it's what they say also. It's a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, made by fire, because he's always constantly burning any impurities out of us, and we are most holy to the Lord. And anything you give to God in any ministry, if you truly bring it before the Lord and you say, this is my, this is my first fruit, Father. This is my first fruit. He considers that most holy. He considers you most holy. And the things that you do in secret, in the closet, God says he will openly reward that's why it says when you go into fasting, do these things quietly unless God tells you to do it corporately as a group. Because God sees if you are fasting, and really if you are going into a fast anyway, it should not be you going, you choosing. It should be God saying, hey, I'm going to take you on a trip. We're going to go on a fast together. And you won't have any desire for food. You won't have any cramps in your stomach. You won't have any withdrawals. You know, you won't have to think about, well, which one should I do? Should I do juicing or should I do the Daniel? Fast? You won't even have to think about any of that because God will lead you. He'll speak it right to your heart. He'll say, do this, don't do that. It might be a fast nobody else has ever done. It might be a fast of, I want you to spend one hour with me. You know, people are so uh, on the ground and we just can't take the lid off of our brain and say, God, just you come in and tell me, what do you want me to do? Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> okay, let me go on down here. I want to keep going on. I'm just reading really quickly. I want to see what catches my eyes because this is the first time I'm looking at this also. Uh, I want to go on down. Let me see here. There, there are so many. There is so many. Ezra 9, 8, nearing the bottom. And now for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Lord our God. For a little space, a little space of time, a little time that we happen to be here. And now for a little space, grace has been showed from the Lord our God. I just have to, if you don't get that, your wood is wet. To leave us a remnant 
to escape. Thank you, Jesus. If anybody doesn't get that, I can't help it. If anybody does get it, you're getting what I'm getting. You're getting what I'm getting. A remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place. That our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little uh, revi reviving in our bondage. Does that speak uh, volumes to you? I forgot to turn this off. Excuse me. I just have to say, you know, I had somebody calling in uh, right when I am always getting ready to broadcast the phone. Alt never fails. Um, this just speaks volumes to me. Let's just let's just look at this just for a little bit and then let's pray. Ezra nine eight. Ezra nine eight. <coughs> <clears throat> and now for a little space grace hath been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape a way to escape says he will never put more on you than you can burden that he will not show you a way of escape and to give us a nail in his holy place. Okay, what is a nail in his holy place to me? What does that say to you? <clears throat> that tells me that we suffer with the Lord. He suffered with nails in his body. And we suffer. We suffer. We partake of Christ's sufferings. And that's not unholy. That's not that you've done something bad. In fact, look at all of the apostles that suffered on their last moments on the earth, right? And give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes. You see, he takes the burden off of us. What happens when people go through hard times and they suffer? They become broken. They look up to God more. They are much more open. Isn't it interesting now how all of a sudden you see policemen in groups, videos of uh, and many, many officials, and everybody's praying. Do you notice that? Why are they doing that? <clears throat> because they're... <clears throat> <clears throat> because they are challenged. Their faith inside of themselves is challenged and they're questioning, they're wondering. Th these aren't even necessarily Christians, but they all know God exists and God's up. Everybody knows God's up, God's not down, the devil's down. Everybody knows, that's like common knowledge. And now for a little space, that's timeline. Grace, that's unmerited favor God is giving us has been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. We are what we'll be standing when it's all said and done, no matter when he comes for us, whether we go, you know, people thought we were going to go to the, the rapture was going to happen at Easter. I didn't. I don't try to look at those things. I just keep looking up, keep focusing on Christ. Don't try to, because then if it doesn't happen, whoop, you're going to get depressed. Better to just keep your eyes on Christ, keep moving every single day, seal it in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit, no matter what I go through, no matter if there are sufferings, no matter anything, you have given us grace, which is unmerited favor, even if we suffer with you and give us a nail in his holy place. You see, wherever you got are, is God's place because you walk with God. God is in you. And if there is a nail, if you go through sufferings, you're partaking of Christ's sufferings. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it gives you character. It strengthens you. Or should we be asking for that? I don't. But I mean, you can if you want to. I'm always just saying, whatever you have for me, Father, I'm yours no matter what. And I will keep, all I want is to keep working for you, Christ. That's it. Bring in souls that our God, <coughs> I'm sorry, that our God may lighten 
our eyes. Our God may lighten. Lighten. Take the heavy load off. Lighten. It's not going to be dark anymore. We're going to have clear vision in everything. Every decision. Should I do this today? What people said, don't go there. Why should I be afraid when I, I you know, no, have no fear. <clears throat> that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little our Eve reviving, reviving in our bondage. Does anybody have any bondage? Any anything that's binding you today? <clears throat> Do you have any thing that's binding you that you know about? Is it your emotions? That you're feeling challenges, that the devil's trying to come up against you, trying to bind you, trying to put your hands behind your back, trying to uh, mess with your emotions, your spirit, or you're just so depressed because you can't be where you want to be or who you want to be with, or uh, like I was even thinking, I mean, the stupidest things come at us. Do you notice that? When something is taken away from you, like socializing, like socializing. I don't care if you're a pastor, if you're, uh, you know, you work in social places and you're in a band and that is your life. You know, that is your, that is your workplace is the social places where people gather. I don't care, but it's interesting how when things are taken away and you have a little nail and you're suffering all of a sudden, it's like you then appreciate, wow, I can't go there and do that anymore. Whether you just wanted to go to socialize or you just wanted to, it's like your freedom is taken away. Do you notice that? You notice that. I know you notice that. And so these are <clears throat> the little nails that we're all suffering it's a holy place where we are. I don't care if you're suffering or not. Where you are, God is. And it's a holy place. That our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. Think of the, Egy the Jews in Egypt, you know. <clears throat> How many years they waited for Moses. How many years are we waiting for Christ to come and take us out. How many years? Some Christians are feeling, oh, it's several more years. Some Christians are saying, no, no, we should have had it in Easter a couple days ago. Our focus should be on Christ no matter when he comes. And that's that's, I think, enough. I think that's enough. I was uh, <clears throat> watching, starting to watch just a little bit of a, a YouTube video called Jacob's Ladder. Chose, C-H-O-O-S-E. Chose, I believe that's chose. Hell. I always get choose and chose in my brain mixed up. I think it's chose. I always read the comments. And it's very interesting to me <laughs> because the comments, it's in it, one comment says, uh, Shaolin, Shaolin, uh, whatever. It's interesting that the Chose Hell video has more views than the Chose Heaven video. Do you notice that? I think, I think that's something. I, I always love to read, um, the comments, because to me, uh, the comments are very interesting. Another interesting video that I, I could not even bear to watch the whole thing that's up, put out by Richie from Boston recently on April the 12th, that's yesterday, titled Bill Gates Brings M-A-R-I-N-A, -A, Marina Abramovic, Abramovic to the world. I mean, it is the most sick sick, sick art. They calling it art. Uh, it, it is so sick. I had to stop watching it. I couldn't watch it. How the devil is arising. The devil. I tell you what I'm going to do. 
I am going to uh, share this. I'm going to copy this. I, I'm not telling you to watch this <clears throat> because this is very sick. You don't have to watch this. Now, I'm going to put this other link up as well called uh, Jacob's Ladder Chose Hell. I'm just putting it in the comments because I don't know what I, I don't want to get any strikes or have anything, you know, people take a chance to lose whatever to be on air because the word is getting out. We need Christ. Hell is arising. I'm sure there must be new devils trying to come out. Some people, their whole platform is on ghosts and they're calling them everything, you know, um, the Nepha, uh, the giants, Nephilim. I just want to keep my eyes on Christ. That's my platform. That's where my focus is to keep the body, the remnant of Christ. And you know who you are if you fall in that category or not. Some people say, I don't know if I'm saved. Then I question, I would question it too. If I were you and you're questioning it, pray, get on your knees, get yourself prostrate until God meets with you and there's no doubt in your mind. If you can't just take the word at point value, stay on the ground until you have the presence of God overwhelm you. And then there is no doubt in your mind because you're in serious times right now. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just simply saying, if you have a problem with God, if you have a problem that you're not worthy or you're not good enough, oh, please stop. Stop. Jesus died for everybody. We are all on the ground. Nobody has a Nobody is going to hell except they send themselves there by their own choices, by their own words, by their own things that they believe in. Because I want to say this, if you are questioning if you're going to heaven or not, just think about this scenario. Put yourself in an imaginary, imaginary scenario. Someone comes and they're knocking on your door. And they give you a choice. Do you claim Jesus as your God? That's the choice. What would you say if someone knocked on your door and you had to make that decision today? What would you say? You see, it really comes down to what we say and believe. That's why John 3.16 is the truth. For God so loved the world that he gave, that was a decision God chose. He gave his only begotten son. And what's the rest of it say? That whosoever, that's anybody's welcome, everybody's welcome. That whosoever would believe on him. What does that mean to believe on him? That means you're choosing with your mind. I'm choosing to believe it should not perish should not perish right there that seals it you're going to heaven if you believe in your mind should not perish what do you think that means perish from what where when why who you that's who when whenever your last breath is on the earth whenever that's the when what is you? You are the who and you are the what. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you want life or death? It's very simple. Somebody knocked on your door today. What would you say? I choose Jesus or I don't. It's very simple. And that's how you know if you're really born again. That's how you know I choose Christ. 
have no doubt in him. His, what is that other scripture that says, believe in his heart, have, believe in his heart and his mind, and have no doubt. Basically, have no doubt. Have no doubt. You can have all the doubt in the world of yourself because we all fall down. Everybody falls down. But don't have doubt in God. Don't have doubt in John three sixteen. Don't have any doubt at all in what God says. You're not putting your basing your faith on what you've done because none of us is worthy. No, not one. Everybody has sinned. Everybody has sinned. But that's yesterday's news. Don't keep pulling it along like you've got a chain around your neck and you're dragging this thing. You're dragging this thing because you don't need to. Drop the load today. Say, I'm not going to let this mess with me another minute. Not one more minute. Because today is the day of salvation. The Lord wants to show you wonderful things today. He wants to talk to you, walk with you, sup with you, eat with you, have you bless your food, even if you can't even go out of your house, bless your food. Remember when I told you guys, bless your food in your shopping carts when you're standing. Oh my God, can you imagine now? People are in line and they have to stay six feet away. Hey, are you still blessing your food in your shopping cart? Are you still blessing your food right before you eat it? Are you personally thanking God? Even though there's no crowd there, nobody can see. It's just you and God. Don't you think God knows that? I just don't understand how people can question God. Like if you question God, stay with God until there is no more questions in your mind, at least about salvation. I mean, that's the foundation. You have to have your foundation if you're going to make it in these dark days. Because if you think this is bad, if you think this is bad, we haven't seen anything yet. I could share with you. I could tell you what I'm sensing, what I'm seeing coming in the future. But shall we dwell on the negative? Shall I send out another video and say, oh, this is the dark. Oh, this is what's coming. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know what? I think if you're in Christ, you already know anyway. How could you not? No. What's at the door? What's coming? It's amazing to me how people always dwell on the negative more than the positive. If I put up a video and there's a negative title, you know, people have become famous. Ministers on the Internet have become famous have drew crowds, grown their their viewership over sensationalistic negative titles. I don't understand that, but I will say one thing. Everybody will answer to God when it's all said and done. And if they did this to just gain an audience, they will get no reward in heaven for it because that is of the flesh. And what does the scripture say? Whoop, there you have your reward. You wanted an audience, you wanted an award, you wanted to have a bunch of money come in and you started to sell things. There you have your reward. The gospel should never, ever, ever be charged. You should, n now education is fine. But to say that you can't hear from God unless you go to a school online, no, that's wrong. And you know it.
You know, do you think when David was out in the field and the prophet came, I think it was Samuel, was it Samuel? Came to David's father. And he said, God sent me here to anoint the future king of Israel. And he said, bring me your sons. And so he said, well, these are my sons. And he says, no, this isn't the one. Don't you have another son? He says, well, yeah, I do, but he's nothing. He's little. He's not, he's not a, a ferocious. He's not a born leader qualities. He isn't. In fact, he's out sh tending to the sheep. He's just watching the sheep. What did the prophet of God say? Immediately. That's the one. That's the one. What did David go about? Thank you. Thank you. What did David go about and do? Great feats for the Lord. Isn't he the one that slew? Uh, well, he did Goliath. He slew Goliath. Somebody said, what do you think those other two stones were for? And somebody said, I thought it was so cute. I don't know if it's true or not. They said, because in case Goliath had a couple of brothers. <laughs> I think that's so funny. But you see, he was the least likely to be used as far as even his own father, earthly father, said, oh, David, no, not David. No, not David. Are you saying that about your walk with God? Oh, not me. And there goes the stream. The devil does not want this message to get out because probably a few people are watching. Just a few. It always happens. It always happens. I think the message got out today. I hope you got whatever God wanted you to get. Number one, you are the remnant. If you're watching this, it's because God has you watching it. It's no coincidence you're watching it. There it goes again. <laughs> It's going off again. I'm red, it says, but I'll, I see it still going. All I'm saying is you are the remnant. If you're watching this, it's no coincidence. God has had you watch this for a reason. There is no such thing as coincidence in the body of Christ. Why does the devil fight this telecast so much? We've had so many problems with the stream. Why? You tell me why. Why can other people get on and they can just have these live streams and there's no problems at all? Why? My nose is itching. I'm sorry. Why? Why can any other ministries have perfect streaming? And then you come here and the battle is on. The devils don't want this to get out. They don't want, surely don't want you to share this. That's for sure. They don't want you to share this. They don't want you to give it a thumbs up. In fact, there's always this one little person, which I feel really sorry for them, that continuously gives this these videos a one thumb down. One thumb down. It's like they just can't get over whatever they're they're having a problem with and I have no idea but I'm so sorry because you know what that one pro person is going to have to bend their knee to Christ and answer for that I, I hope God speaks to their heart in love and says you know what I just pray God lets them in because God will not let anybody in that is holding sin and hatred and, and what do you call that, vengeance? There is no, what is that? There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Whoever this is, is stuck. They're really stuck. I'm not mad at them. That's for sure. I don't even know who they are. Because, you see, the devils always work in the darkness, in the shadows. They'll never come out and 
even it, it's like they want to be invisible and people that are consumed in anger and frustration and, and vengeance and all of that, they're always in the dark because if they would come to the light, they would be exposed. Don't you see? So never ever get mad at people because it's not even about them. It's about the evil spirits around them or within them, whatever. But you know what? I'm pressing on. I'm claiming myself as part of the remnant and I pray you are too because that is what is most important. That is what's most important is that we press onward with Christ. Look at 55. God is amazing. 55 minutes. We've only been on air 55 minutes. Many times when I sit on this telecast, I feel like I could just go on and on and on and on because I've got so much to talk about, about Jesus. You know, the most amazing thing God showed me, uh, that video a couple days ago I did about heaven, I don't know if you caught that, was that God was showing me how time is going to be so insignificant. In fact, you're going to be out of time when we're there. It's going to seem like a million years, a thousand years that we'll be holding our arms up, praising God. And you'll have all of the ability to do that because the, there is no, what, gravity in heaven? Is that what it is? All I know is, well, you're going to be able to fly everywhere you want. You'll instantly be wherever you want. You're going to have the house of your dreams. Everybody's going to get the house of their dreams. Everybody's going to have animals. I mean, somebody wants a rainbow horse. You can have it in heaven. You can have anything you want in heaven that gives glory to God. I believe. I'm choosing to believe that. If you want to believe, you know, we're just stuck up there. We're going to have whatever we had down here. I think it's going to be a whole new world and it's going to be so awesome. I have been to heaven a few times by the Spirit of the Lord. I've seen the outer uh, countryside before I went through the, the gates opened up when my guardian angel took me the first time, which he showed me hell first and then he showed me heaven. And before I went through the gates, I saw the outside. It was so wonderful. It was so wonderful. The trees, the grass, the flowers, the little bees, everything was so alive, so full of life of God in it. There are no shadows in heaven, none, no shadows in heaven. It is all the light of God. You don't even need a sun in heaven because you've got the light of God. Jesus, the light of our Lord, he lights the whole place. And we're so close on that timeline. The remnant is so close. We're almost home. This is a time when the devils are going to try, try, try to depress you. Don't let them. And how you know you're saved is when it really comes down to if somebody would knock at your door and say, who do you serve? That's when you'll know if you're saved or not. I hope it never comes to that. I hope you know right now if you are saved. <clears throat> I hope you know. I hope you don't need that kind of a question put to you to know if you're saved or not. You should know that already. You should know already. And that's all I know. Please add closed captions for deaf people. Are you deaf? Uh, that's the first time I've even seen that. So that's something that I'll have to look into. I have no idea how to do that. I have no idea. But um, 
I'll look into that. And if that's what God wants, that's what it'll be, period. Period. I just want you to have a blessed day in the midst of all the hell. Just remember what Ron Connolly said. If, you, if, you're going, uh, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Uh, if you, what was that song? If you, uh, if you're going through hell, don't stop. If you're going through hell, don't stop. If you're suffering with that nail, wonderful verses we read today. Wonderful. The Bible gateway is wonderful. Father, I pray right now for Sister Livia. I pray for Sister Darlene and George in Hawaii. I pray for Sister Sue Sabrale. In the name of Jesus, the enemy's trying to come up against this and it's trying to ask me if I want to stop the broadcast in several other venues. So I'm just going to say, Father, I thank you for everybody watching and listening within the sound of this video, my voice, that they can hear it. And Father, for every deaf spirit that wants to hear it, I bind you, Satan, you foul demonic spirit of deafness. Leave them. Loose them. Loose their tongue now. 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 And all of the body of Christ said, now. We're all saying, spirit of deafness, out, out, out. Get off of them. Loose their mind, their ears. You spirit of deafness, leave now we command it in the name of Jesus. Amen. The stream is going red and green, red and green all the time. So I'm going to say thank you so much for coming today because uh, we will not be defeated. We will not be defeated. Amen. Maybe we'll just do this at nighttime and really tick the devils off, right? <laughs> I would love it. I would love it if I could find the time. And so till next time, till at least tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. California time to the best of my ability. Please give me pay, your patience if I'm not able right at the 9 a.m. time slot for me. Thank you, Jesus, so much for everybody that's watching, that's listening. I bless them in the name of Jesus that they are the remnant, that you will let them know, Father, they are the remnant and to hold on when everything else falls. When you've done everything, what does the Word of God say? Stand. When you've done everything you know to do, stand and keep on standing. Ask and keep on asking. And the door shall be, to everyone that asks, the door shall be opened in Jesus' name that we will get the gospel out, Father God. That we will be living examples of who you are, what you are, and why we are saved in the name of Jesus so that they will come in because they're all looking and watching right now, Lord. They're all looking and watching and they're looking for answers. They're wondering what's going to happen to me tomorrow. Oh, Father God, use us mightier than you ever have before in the name of above every name, the name of Jesus. And Father, as I'm looking at tithe right now, pe some people, they, they, whatever way they're sending it, Father, I ask you to bless them back a thousandfold right now, Father God. A thousandfold is what you always put on my heart to anybody that's praying for this ministry because this ministry is under attack always, always. But you are with us always. As one of the precious people sent me, God always, always shows up. I have to show that. They sent that to me. And I looked at that, and it's so interesting. It's a gorgeous white rock. I just love this. It's sitting on my desk. Take a look and pray about that. Why does it say God always, always shows up? Because that's what I would always say. And, you know, it's like God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. God always, always shows up. And God is showing up. God is showing up. 
Father, we give you our day. We give you our day. We bind the works of the enemy. Any enemy that's trying to come on our property, we bind you, we curse you at the root, and we uproot you and throw you over the fence. In the name of Jesus, get off our property. We seal it with the blood of Jesus. Every inch of what you have given us, the property you've given us, the blood of Jesus over the minds, the hearts, the souls of our family. For as uh, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord and none other, none other, any other spirits get off, out, don't come back. Because we curse you. Get off. In Jesus' name. Wow. I just hear everybody saying amen. I just hear everybody saying amen. I hear everybody saying amen. It's so wonderful. Is it not? Is this not? You know, everybody's on the internet looking for the answers too. That's just like such a kick. Such a kick, right? Such a kick in the devil's butt, right? I'm sorry, I have to say it like it is. Say it like it is, Susan. It's a kick in the devil's you know what <laughs> Okay, thank you, Jesus, for coming. And thank you for coming today. I pray you were blessed. And I'm moving forward with God. You know, you can get worried about your finances, you get worried about if you have a house payment, you, you have a rent payment, you can get worried about everything. We can get worried about, oh my gosh, I better go to the gas station again and keep it topped off because they might shut the gas pumps off. Do you know what? If we don't praise the Lord, what does it say? The rocks will cry out. You know, all those talking about rocks, all the elite are wanting to go into their bunkers. Now they're all afraid because they're realizing, oh my God, if those things come out of the sky, all those big rocks come out of the sky, or we get caught in the debris thereof, and now it's heating up under all the, all the earth is heating up with fire. What if we go underground? Some of them are getting afraid to go under inside their own bunkers. Did you know that? That's out there now. That's what's going around. It's all circulating. And you know, there's always some little ear listening in these elite offices of where they're just talking, talking, because they are so consumed with fear. Do you think these elites that have evil influences or are evil are not arguing amongst themselves? Of course they are. Don't think they have it all together. They don't. They are scared to death because they know their fate is sealed. They know they have chosen darkness over light. They know where they're going. Don't you think they know where they're going? Do you know where their deception comes? They have, they are deceiving themselves and they are deceived. But you know what? They know who they serve. They know who they serve. I'm choosing Jesus, just the mention of his name, Jesus, just the mention of his name. Angels come, we have the glory of God, the peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. No weapons in hell can touch us. Not me. I refuse. Because to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, and to be in the body, we are with the Holy Spirit in our body anyway. So wherever we go, God goes. Choose ye this day who you will serve. Amen. I'm staying in the word. I love you guys. Give whatever questions you have to Jesus. He is your best friend. He has every answer for your life. And thank you for coming today. I love you. I'm lifting you up this day. 
And Eric, if you're watching, I cannot find in Oregon, Corvallis, I cannot find your email address to email you. So if you could drop me an email, um, that would be great. Love you guys so much. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Amen. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. That's what I'm doing. And I know that's what you're doing. See you soon, probably tomorrow. Love you lots. Thank you for your thumbs up. Share in the video if you feel led. And we will just see how God is going to continue to move us and use us. Amen. Don't lose hope. We're almost home. I love you. See you tomorrow.